Okay, welcome to the last lesson of the probability and statistics unit, and this one is going to be on collecting data. Collecting data as well as analyzing uh, these data. So first thing we're gonna do is, when collecting data, you need to know how you're going to be collecting data, and that is really being able to tell the difference between uh, populations and samples. Um, a population is a collection of data <clears throat> that counts every single person in the data set that you want. For example, if I wanted to see you know, how many people over the age of 65 have health insurance, <clears throat> or what's the, uh, you know, that, that would be, or what percentage of you know, people over 65 have health insurance, um, if I wanted to do a population, I would literally have to count every single citizen in the United States that was over 65. And <clears throat> many times when we're doing uh, data collection, we don't count the population just because uh, oftentimes the population is way too large and there's just too many people. It would be time consuming and expensive. And so we don't usually calculate the population because it's just, um, it's just too many, too many people. So if I were to see the percent of people over 65 that have health insurance, I would not want to ask the population. I would want to take a sample. The sample, a sample is a subset of the population where you're just taking a piece of the population to figure out your data. And this is by far the most often used uh, way of collecting data. Another example is like with, um, uh, you know, in recent elections, you know, they <clears throat> talk about, they do all these polling and they ask like so many percent of Americans support uh, this, pre this candidate or this candidate. And um, I think everybody understands that they didn't literally ask every single person in the United States who they were supporting. Um, <clears throat> but what they do is they take a sample. They just, you know, maybe call a thousand people and see who they support and then they can take their data from there. So it is oftentimes that we take samples when you're taking a portion of the population rather than taking every single person in that group. And it doesn't have to be everyone in the United States. You know, maybe you're just trying to see, you know, how many children, you know, get eight hours of sleep. So to do the population, you would have to count every single child that's in the United States, uh, whereas a sample would just collect a portion of the amount of kids. The other thing, uh, and so we've already established here that most uh, data is collected in a sample. So now when you are collecting in a sample, <clears throat> you want to make sure that you are not being biased in your questions that you are asking. So are you, when you ask your questions, are you leading them to a particular answer? Or are you asking them questions where they already have uh, a particular mindset of something. For, for example, you know, if I go to, you know, uh, Taco Bell, <clears throat> and I stand outside of Taco Bell and I ask everybody coming out of Taco Bell, you know, what's their favorite fast food place? That would be a biased question because I'm asking them what their favorite food or fast food place is and I'm at a fast food restaurant. So many of those people probably un, un a, uh, uh, abnormal amount of people would probably choose Taco Bell coming out of Taco Bell because they are already there. And so that's a biased question. Or, <clears throat> you know, if I go to, you know, um, a rock concert and I ask them, you know, everyone at the rock concert, what their favorite genre of music is, you know, more likely they're going to shoot, choose rock because they're at a rock concert. Other ways that you can be biased is by leading them to particular answer, answers. For example, I could ask a question like, <clears throat> do you think the current, or do you think, um, the former state representative did a really great job or do you think the terrible current uh, legislator is doing a good job? By the way I phrase that question, saying that the current one is terrible, I'm leading the person to a particular answer. 
you know, you might not know. And maybe you're like, oh, he's terrible. Oh, then no, I, I think the other guy did a good job. So um, we want to be careful with bias. And so you need to be able to recognize bias in sampling. So here's a question where it says, uh, is, this, is this biased or not? Uh, a news organization asks, asks its viewers to participate in an online poll about bullying. Now, you have to ask yourself, would people who are watching this particular news organization have any bias about bullying? Um, and you could probably guess it's just, this is probably going to be unbiased because, oh, unbiased because, um, th because they watch the news or they watch this TV show, they may not um, have a particular, I mean, they might not lean a particular way about bullying. So that's, uh, that's um, unbiased. Now that's different from you know, the second example where it says a computer science teacher wants to know how students at a school most often ask, uh, access the internet. The teacher asks one, his students in one of his computer science classes. So this is going to be biased because the, so, the computer science teacher is asking his computer science classes how his students most often access the internet. Uh, it is likely that most of them access their internet while they're in a computer-based class. So this would create some biased data. And so that's, that's why we say biased. Um, outliers, there is a definition here for outliers. And I kind of messed this up when I was making these notes. I deleted the question. <laughs> That's here, so we're not actually going to do any questions here, but I think everybody understands what is an outlier. Um, outliers are numbers that are outside of the sort of normal data that you're getting. So if I get, you know, I got all the test scores of my classes, and everyone scored between seventy and ninety percent or something like that, but I had one kid that scored a twenty percent, that would be an outlier. Just a, a some data point that is outside of where most of my data is and that that's called an outlier. Outliers can can mess up data. They can they can um skew your data. Um so oftentimes when people are collecting data, if there are any outliers, a lot of times they'll remove them um just so that the data that they give is kind of an accurate representation of most of the people or most of the data points. So if I had, you know, you know, the ages of the people in my classroom, you know, if I included my age in the classroom, my age would skew the average age of the kids in the classroom. It's, you know, if I did the average including myself, it would say that the average age of the people in my classroom is like 20 years old. Now that doesn't make any sense. No one in my class is 20 years old. They're all, you know, 16, 15, 16, 17, 18. So by removing my age, removing the outlier, you get a more accurate representation of your data. So that's what an outlier is. And again, I deleted the problem here, so you can't even answer these questions. The second thing we're going to be doing here is after you've collected your data now, how do we analyze the data? And one of the, we've, we've analyzed the data in several ways already. But another way that we can analyze the data is by measuring its variation. So you can take your data and measure how much the data, <laughs> how much the data varies. So you can do that by looking at range. And we already know how to do range. And you can also do it by what is called standard deviation. The range will tell you just how much variation there is within your data, but standard deviation will tell you how much it varies. So we, it's a more precise uh, data calculation to give you kind of where most of your data is and how much, really, how much variation there really is in your data. So first we'll calculate range, so you can look at that, and then I'll show you how to calculate standard deviation using a graphing calculator. So we're going to use this question here, this example, where you have the reality cooking show. And each show, there's two reality cooking shows, show A and show B. Each one selected 12 contestants to participate in their show. And the ages of those contestants are in the tables.
So what we're going to do is first find the range of each of these. So the range of show A and the range of show B. Now the range of show A, remember range is taking the lowest number or the highest number, subtracting the lowest number. So my highest number is 31, my lowest number is 19. So when I subtract those, I get a range of 12. A, in show B, my highest age is 48, youngest age is 19. When I subtract those, I get 29. And so we can see in show A has a smaller range than show B. So the variation is smaller in show A than show B. So what standard deviation is going to show us is just how much uh, shorter is that range. It's, it's an actual value you're going to get with standard deviation. And so we use uh, our graphing calculators to calculate stand standard deviation. So we're going we're gonna to do the standard deviation for each show, and that is down here. Ignore the tables. Um, this is if you were doing it by hand uh, back, in the, back in the day. <laughs> Several years ago when we were doing standard deviation, we made the students calculate them by hand. But you, you don't need to do that anymore as um, anytime you see standard deviation on a standardized test, um, you're not going to have to calculate it by hand. Um, you can use your graphing calculator. So we're going to look at show A. And so what we need to do is we need to put this into our stat, into our calculator. We're going to put this into our list. This is going to look familiar. I'm going to bring up my, my graphing calculator here so you can, you can do this with me here. Uh, I'm going to go to the graphing calculator that's online. You may or may not have a graphing, like a physical graphing calculator. Um, so on the calculator, again, this is going to look familiar in that we are going to go to stat. That's, this is where we put our data points. We put our data points into our lists that are in our stat. So we click stat, edit, and then we're going to put our lists in here. And uh, I know it, it's kind of confusing. You see two columns there. That doesn't actually mean that there are two columns of data. They're all the same data. They're all ages of the show, show A. So I'm going to put all of these into one list, into list one. So I'm going to enter these all in. And sorry, this is, will take a 30 extra seconds here. I don't know what's going, what am I doing here? 29, 22, 27. One thing uh, to check and make sure there is if you look at the very bottom of the screen on the calculator, if I go to my last number, 31, it will say list one 12th entry. It says a 12 there for 12 entries. That is a quick check to make sure that you did all your points. It's real easy when these, these tables get large to maybe forget a point. I know that there are 12 contestants, so I, there should be 12 points, data points. And if I go to my last number, you'll see that list one, there's 12 data points there. It's on the 12th data point. Once you have the information in there, uh, to calculate standard deviation, uh, you only need one list. So you go to stat. And you'll go to calc. And again, this looks familiar because this is how we did uh, linear regression, quadratic regression, you know, cubic and quartic regressions. Uh, but we're actually going to look at one variable statistics. So that's the very first one, one var stats, which is one variable statistics. Click enter. Yes, list one's what we want. And then we're going to hit calculate. This gives you a slew of information about your data. Um, the very first thing that's up there, you'll see an X with a bar over it. That is your mean. That's your average. Your average age of all the people in show A is 25. So that's what uh, X bar means. That's, the, that's your, your mean, our average. Uh, so we need that. Other information that it gives you, you'll see here down, if you scroll down, you'll see uh, N is just the number of entries. Uh, but then you have your minimum. So if, if you're thinking about box and whisker, like your minimum is 19, quartile 1 is 20.5, uh, median is 26, 
quartile three is 29 and your maximum value is 31. So it gives you everything you would need to do a box and whisker as well. But the only things we need to focus on in this table or in this, I guess in this, this stat output here is the mean, which is what we have here um, in, in 25. And then we need the standard deviation. Standard deviation is the Greek symbol sigma. Okay, and it looks like the an O with a little tail on it there. That is your standard deviation, and you'll go to two decimal places, at least two decimal places. Uh, and these are the two values. Whoop, these are the two values that you need. Don't get confused with S. S, I mean, if you were just looking at it and going, oh, which one's standard deviation? It, it would make sense for S to be standard deviation, but it's not. Uh, sigma is standard devi deviation. And so you need to do the little O with a tail looking thing. Once you have your standard deviation, you're going to, and I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller so I can, I can do some more work here. Um, once you do your standard deviation, you want to interpret your results. What does the standard deviation tell you? The standard deviation tells you how much your data deviates from the, from the mean, from the average. How much does your data... So what this is saying is that the ages of the people in here uh, deviate uh, four, plus 4 and minus 4. It's always plus or minus uh, the deviation because you can deviate up and you can deviate down. Uh, deviates moving away from the average. So this is saying that plus four and minus four years is where everyone kind of lies in this. So um, if you think about like 25, I, that looks like negative 25, but if I think of like a, uh, on a number line, you know, you have like a number line and here's 25. The standard deviation will be left and right 4.2. Now, because we're talking about ages uh, in years, then we can probably just round the standard deviation to 4 because we don't know 0.2 years. We don't know the, the decimals of ages of any of these people. So it, it, we can't have a standard deviation that's in decimals. If this were money... Or, or something like that, or home values or something like that, then we could use decimals. But um, ages, we, d we can't. It, the same thing would occur with people. Like if, if you're talking about how many people, you wouldn't have you know, a portion of a person. So we can just round this to four um, in either direction. And so what this is going to tell us is that, oh, I don't know... I don't know what I did there. There you go. Four in both directions. So what we have here uh, is 21 on this side and then 29 on this side going four, plus four and minus four in both directions, plus four, minus four. And so what this tells us when we're interpreting our results is that most contestants are between 21 and 29 years old. And so that's what standard deviation is going to tell us. It's going to tell us where most of our data exists. And a standard deviation of four goes, we go to our mean and just go up and down four. And so that'll tell us that our, most of our data occurs between 21 and 29 years old. And that's how we use standard deviation. We're gonna do one more example here. Uh, we're gonna do show B. Uh, we've already seen that show B has a much wider range than show A, so you can probably guess that the standard deviation is also going to be wider. But let's see how much. So we're going to put this data in, stat, edit. Um, I'm going to just overwrite my data since I know it's the same amount of points, and so I can just type right over them. I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so I have all of them there. I'll go to stat, calc, one variable statistics. 
I got everything I need. Looks like the average age for this one is one year older at 26. Um, but And then the standard deviation is uh, 7.47. So obviously, yes, we see that the standard deviation is larger here because the range of the ages is larger. So um, that we expected a, a bigger standard deviation. Uh, and so what I need to do here, remember we're talking about ages. So uh, when we're talking about a number line, if this were 26, the average or the mean, uh, 7.47, we're going to go this way, positive 7.47, and this way, minus 7.47. Now, I told you guys, because you're dealing with ages, that we can just ignore. Uh, we can round, and this rounds to 7, and just go 7 each way. So I know that this number would be, if I subtract 7 and then add 7, I get 19 and 33. So I could say that most contestants are on the show are between the ages of 19 and 33. And that's how you interpret using standard deviation. And that's it. Thanks, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, let me know.